Hi, in this video we'll be looking at glide reflections and freeze patterns. A glide reflection you might remember working on when we were in the computer lab uh, doing some things on geometry sketch pad. If you remember a glide reflection is a combination of a reflection and a translation. And so you can see some examples on this page where you would uh, reflect a figure and then translate it or you could translate it first and then reflect it. So a couple of these pictures here, like the one with the, with the horses, kind of interesting picture because there's a light um, colored horses and dark colored horses. But if you were to uh, flip one of the, the light colored horses, okay, do a reflection, and then translate it or slide it, you could make that go over one of the dark colored horses with the rider. Similarly, the leaves, if the reflecting line was the branch, you could reflect a leaf over the branch and then translate it or slide it and you would make it go over one of the other leaves. Okay, these pictures on the bottom are a couple other examples. The one on the bottom right looks sort of like the one that you did on Geometer Sketchpad where you re reflected a triangle and then did a translation afterwards. So you went from the blue to the green uh, with the reflection and then you slid it to the red. Okay, here's an example of how you uh, might do a, a, a glide reflection yourself. <clears throat> in this case, uh, the, the instructions are at the top there. We're doing a translation where we're going x plus 10, y plus 1. So what that means is we're going to take each of these points and we're going to go 10 to the right and 1 up. Okay, so A is going to go a little bit off the screen. If I go 10 to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I only go up to 8. So if I go over 10 and up 1, I'll just put this on the far edge of the screen. So that would be A prime. And then B, if I go 10 to the right and 1 up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 1 up. This would be B prime. And then C, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 to the right and 1 up. That would be C prime. And so now I've got this triangle, but now I'm not done yet because now it also says you're supposed to reflect it in the x-axis. So if I reflect B prime, it's going to end up one unit below the x-axis, so that would be B double prime. And then A, remember A prime ended up on the, uh, the far right of the screen here. If I reflected that over the x-axis, it's a little bit off where it really is because we ran out of room. This would be A double prime. <clears throat> and then C double prime, that would also get reflected above the x-axis. It's three units below the x-axis, so I go three units above, and that would be C double prime. So if I connect A double prime and B double prime and C double prime, this is where the figure eventually ends up when I'm done with my glide reflection. The composition theorem, okay, here's a theorem that has to do with, with, uh, with these different isometries. If you remember, an isometry is a, a um, transformation where a figure retains its lengths of its sides and its angles. So it says the composition of two or more isometries is still an isometry, okay, and, and again, so an isometry, if you remember the definition of that. For glide reflections, the order in which we perform the compositions does not affect the final image. So the problem that we did before, we could have done the reflection first, and then we could have done the translation, and we would have ended up in the exact same place. This is not true for all compositions. You're going to see in the next few screens an example where it's not a glide reflection, and the final figure is going to end up in a different place. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so in this case, uh, the, what we're going to do is we're going to um, start out at PQ, which PQ is the light blue colored segment, and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin. Then we're going to reflect it in the x-axis. If you remember, because we've been working on, uh, re on rotations, that there's a rule for 90 degrees clockwise which says that xy when you do a 90 degree clockwise rotation, 
turns into negative y x. And so you can see that that's what ends up happening between the blue segment and the red segment. So the, the coordinates, remember, they change places. And then the y coordinate, when it goes to, to being the first coordinate, changes signs. So the negative 2 is going to go first, except it's going to become positive 2. And then the original x coordinate, which was 2, is going to become the y coordinate, and that will stay the same. And so that's what ended up being p prime. And if we did that for q, if we trade places again, but the y, the negative 4, is going to turn into positive 4. And then the x, the 3, is going to stay positive 3, but it will become the y. And so 4, 3, again, as you can see, that became q prime. So we did the rotation and ended up at the red segment. And then we were supposed to reflect it over the y-axis. And so you can see we end up at the green segment at negative 4, 3 and negative 2, 2, which is in the second quadrant. Okay, now we'll see what happens if we do this in a different order. If we reflect it in the y-axis first and then do the 90 degrees counterclockwise. And you'll see that since this is not a glide reflection, this is going to end up in a different place. It won't be in the second quadrant. Okay, if you look at the result, if we go right to the ending result, the green P double prime to Q double prime is in the fourth quadrant and not in the second quadrant. So we reverse the order. So we started at the light blue, the PQ, and this time we did the reflection over the y-axis first, which, is, which took us to the red. And um, so you can see where P prime and Q prime are. And then we did the 90 degree rotation, and we ended up on the green segment, P double prime, Q double prime. And again, the, the thing you're supposed to notice here, which is the last statement on the page, the order which the transformations were performed did affect the final image. So going back a few screens, remember that's, that's not true on glide reflections, that it will end up the same. But if it's not a glide reflection, the order does make a difference. Okay, the next topic we're going to look at is something called a freeze pattern. A freeze pattern is a pattern that can be mapped onto themselves with a transformation. And they can, can continue on from left to far to the left and far to the right. The transformations used when you're doing a freeze pattern are as follows. And notice the abbreviations. Translation is abbreviated by T. A 180 degree rotation, notice that's the only rotation, is the 180. That's abbreviated with an R. A reflection over a horizontal line, a reflection over a vertical line, H and B, and a glide reflection. Okay, those are the different ways, the transformations you can use while making a freeze pattern. Here are some examples of some freeze patterns. And on the next page, um, it explains, it t shows you the answers, the transformations that would map each freeze pattern onto itself. <clears throat> so you can see this first picture in, in letter A, that uh, this one, it looks like uh, the simplest way to do it would be with a translation, that if you just continue translating it to the right. Let's see what the answer key says. So you can see A mapped onto itself by a horizontal translation, T. Okay, example B. If you look at example B, it looks like if you rotated it, uh, that would take care of... Uh, yeah, that would be one way, 180 degree rotation would take the first figure and map it into the second figure. And then you do it again, and that would take it to the third figure, and so on. Let's look at the answer key. The answer key says there's two ways you can do it. You can do it the way that I mentioned it. You could keep doing 180 degree rotations, or you could do it with a horizontal translation, which at first seems a little confusing because the first and the second figure don't seem to be a horizontal translation. But if you go back and look at it, and if we think about the first two figures as being the original figure, we could slide those first two figures to the right, and it would be a translation. And so it depends on what you consider your starting picture. The same thing is true with letter C. If we take them in twos, then you would say that what's going on is 180 degree rotation to go from the first two to the third and the fourth, you would take those two objects and rotate them 180 degrees, and then rotate them again, and that would take you to the third pair, and so on. 
or you could take them in fours and you could just do a horizontal translation. So let's look at the answer key. Okay, so same thing. You could, you could do a horizontal translation if you take it in fours, or you could do a horizontal glide reflection. Okay, remember a glide reflection is when you, when you do a combination of a reflection and then a slide, or a slide and then a reflection. Um, though I would still say uh, that 180, oh I see 180 degree rotation does not quite work because if you did then these, these uh, legs that are in the top right would not end up in the bottom left, they'd be in the bottom right. And so I guess it is true that a rotation would not work. You'd have to reflect it first and then you could, um, then you could slide it. Okay, and then the last one, uh, you can see that that looks like uh, a reflection would probably be what I would say, that each one would be a reflection one after the other. And the answer key does say uh, two different things. You could reflect it over a vertical line, which is what I was looking at, or you could do a horizontal translation. So you could do a slide, and that would be if you took it by twos. Okay, here's a summary of all the different uh, types of uh, ways that you could make freeze patterns. And you can see that it has uh, the abbreviations, the translation, TR translation, and followed by a rotation, TG translation, followed by a horizontal glide reflection, and so on. And so you can take a look at this table and put that in your notes. Let me slide it down a little bit so you can copy the rest of it into your notes. And at this point, if you'd like to freeze the video so that you could copy these into your notes. And again, these are all going to make freeze patterns. Remember, freeze patterns are those patterns that go extend onto the right and the left where uh, an object keeps being mapped onto itself and repeating over and over and over again. Okay, here's one more example. These are portions of two freeze patterns, and you're supposed to classify the patterns. So you're try supposed to try to figure out uh, how those patterns uh, came to be. Which sorts of transformations did you do? And so you can see the solution for A. Following the diagrams, you can see that this freeze pattern has rotational symmetry. It also has line symmetry about a horizontal line. And so if you drew a horizontal line uh, through the, the middle of that object, which I can show you, if I did a horizontal line, you could see that it would have symmetry that way also and uh, has rotational symmetry. If you rotated it, you could make the object go upon itself. And it also has uh, line symmetry about a vertical line. And so what that means is if we took a vertical line, we could also, uh, let's see, if we did a vertical line right down here, whoops, if we did a vertical line right down here, we could also uh, we could also reflect it. It has line symmetry, and you could also use a glide reflection. So you could do a reflection followed by a slide, and that would work also. And so these are all the abbreviations for all the things we talked about. Uh, so a translation, rotational, a horizontal symmetry, vertical symmetry would be the V, and then G would be glide reflection. So that's what we're supposed to do here: is come up with all the possible ways that we could uh, that we could do these patterns. So for B, you can see some uh, horizontal, so it looks like that would have an H. It does not have rotational symmetry because you'd have to spin it all the way around 360 degrees, and so that does not work. It also does not have horizontal symmetry. In this case, we cannot take a horizontal line and have it map onto itself because the horse's head wouldn't, there isn't a horse's head on the bottom. Uh, on the vertical symmetry, that also would not work because if we flipped it over the vertical line, that the horse's head would go from the left and it would have to be on the right, which it's not. So that does not have horizontal or vertical. Um, uh, horizontal or vertical. But it, you can do a translation. Let's see what the answer key says. That's it. Okay, it says all you can do is uh, use a T. A T. 
uh, just a translation. Okay, here's just uh, to finish up, here's a couple more examples of some freeze patterns just so you can see what a few more look like. Okay, so hopefully you understand glide reflections a little better and freeze patterns. Let us know if you have any questions.